Welcome to Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLuga. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Wednesday, September 18th. We've got a little bit of an extended week here with the Jaguars not kicking off in week three until Monday night, 7.15 p.m. So we will get into plenty of Jaguars versus Bills specific talk. And if you want to get a little bit of a game preview for that, you can go check out Cover One. Disguised Coverage was on that Bills show last night. We talked for about an hour about some matchups in this game and different things that can take place. So that was a great show with Anthony from Cover One. Uh, again, highly encourage you to go check it out. So today, though, wanted to look at how the Jaguars can like tangibly improve. This isn't improve going into 2025. This is improve this week. This is like little things that they can do better. Offensively, defensively, special teams, and, and this isn't like get more talented, right? These are areas that the Jaguars have shown they can be better and, and areas that they need to be better moving forward, okay? And areas I think they can improve upon, you know, as quickly as this week. So we're going to dive into that. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjack.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear, like the hat I'm wearing right now, the Jack's Varsity Snapback. Become a channel member here on YouTube. So offensively, the Jaguars are mistaking, making mistakes everywhere, right? It's, it's been ugly um, in a lot of regards. And now I do want to put this into context, right? So for the first three quarters of the Miami game until Travis Etienne fumbled. The Jaguars offense looked really good overall. Like, was it entirely perfect? No. But was it executing at a fairly high level, moving the ball, putting points on the board? Yeah. You saw a lot of good things, even with some mistakes. And so that's just to say, like, I think against a lot of NFL defenses, the Jaguars offense will move the ball, and hopefully, when they have their opportunities to put points on the board, they'll be able to capitalize. Now, the offensive line has been very inconsistent, especially against Cleveland. Um, I, I thought that, again, against Miami, the offensive line, Anton Harrison did have a struggle uh, with Jalen Phillips, and he struggled his first two games of the year. And so we've seen Anton Harrison, for an entire season, his rookie year, play very well in pass protection. That hasn't been happening so far. I think that he's going to improve. I absolutely do. I think Cam Robinson, for most of the Dolphins game, played very well. He struggled with Miles Garrett. Shocker, right? Um, everybody's going to struggle with Miles Garrett one-on-one. -on -one. So I think that the tackles need to play better, and I think that they can play better. How quickly will that happen? I have no clue. But I think both of your tackles can play better in pass protection than they have shown, specifically in, in, in week two against Cleveland. But overall, they both had a rough fourth quarter against Miami and both struggled against the Browns. So the offensive line's been inconsistent. Um, and it's not just execution of pass protection like one-on-ones. It's also like getting up to the line of scrimmage, getting in the call, communicating it, identifying the protections, whether that's Mitch Morris or Trevor Lawrence. Doug Peterson talked about it. They've got to do better at identifying protections, calling out protections, um, and making sure everyone's on the same page and doing that quickly. So that kind of goes to the offensive line and the entire offense and the coaching staff. That's got to be better. And it, that's a thing that's very easy to fix. It's not like this earth-shattering problem that there's no solution to. You can absolutely fix that quickly. Um, receivers are dropping the ball, which has been a story pretty much every season of Trevor Lawrence's career. They're not making all the plays they can make. Now, last week, down the stretch, it was pouring. It was absolutely pouring out there, and so you saw some mistakes you probably wouldn't normally see. I think that you know Gabe Davis probably able to get his get his feet down and catch that football on the sideline uh, in most situations. 
You saw Brian Thomas Jr. just drop an easy one over the middle. Um, week one, you saw Christian Kirk drop two passes. I think that they can improve slightly in this regard. I think that they will over time. How quickly can it happen? Because the thing with the Jaguars here is, under Doug Peterson, they have gotten off to slow starts. They were 1-2 and two last year. All of a sudden, they're 8-3. and three. They started 3-7 and seven in 2022. All of a sudden, they're 9-8, and eight, right? So they're a team that can get hot. They can play w- well for long stretches of time. But now sitting at 0-2 with the Bills and the Texans up next on the schedule, you've got to get this figured out quick or it is going to devolve. I, I don't think you're starting 0-4 and, and making the playoffs. I, I don't see that at all. So some of these issues that are fixable, they need to get fixed quickly. And not everything has to get fixed all at once. But if the Jaguars are able to fix a couple of these areas, I think that they have a chance to win a game in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, he's missed some throws and reads he wouldn't normally miss, bailed on some pockets too early. Like He had Brian Thomas Jr. for an easy touchdown pass in the red zone last week in the second quarter, but he bailed too quickly. There wasn't pressure. And he bailed out to the left, which made him miss. He was looking to the right, and... Uh, I, he kind of felt phantom pressure, bailed out to the left, and so he was just a half second or less away from seeing Brian Thomas Jr. for that easy touchdown. And he's missed a few throws early on in games, uh, particularly against Cleveland. Like his first half just wasn't sharp, wasn't crisp, but played what, really well in the second overall. Uh, again, coaching hasn't been the best on the offensive side of the ball. Whether you're asking guys to do things they aren't good at, like you know Cam Robinson pulling and trying to hit these fast linebackers and safeties, or going into a shell in the fourth quarter against the Miami Dolphins, that was bad coaching in my opinion. Uh, focusing too much on the run game in general, like I think balance is good, but you want to be more pass first in a Doug Peterson offense, especially when you have Trevor Lawrence throwing the football. I don't think they're using enough tempo, getting Trevor Lawrence into rhythm. Um, dictating to the defense. Like when you use tempo, and you saw it last week, they looked good using tempo. When you're able to do that, defenses are not allowed the time to get into a bunch of different looks, right? Um, You kind of dictate to them that they're only going to have a couple different options that they feel like they can run. If you're getting to the line of scrimmage quickly, getting the ball off, And again, I think that helps Trevor Lawrence get into rhythm. So I think they should use some tempo early in this football game. Get this offense feeling pretty good about itself against the Buffalo Bills. And I think they should do that every week. Um, You don't have to wait to use tempo until the game script dictates that you need to. Like You can do it earlier on, and, and I think the Jaguars should. Not every drive, certainly, but they should use it, utilize that tool, more often early on in games. And again, operationally, pre-snap, you know, getting up to the line of scrimmage, getting out of the huddle, getting the call, communicating it to everyone, identifying identifying the protections, identifying if there's going to be someone hot. I think that they should use more pre-snap motion. Again, that helps you identify coverage. It helps you create leverage. These are little things that they can do a little bit more of. And again, they need to be more consistent operationally. Getting the call in, getting to the line of scrimmage, getting the playoff. They need to be able to avoid having to take timeouts or delay of games. Like That's just ridiculous in my opinion. But also, if you're able to do that, then you can utilize a little bit more pre-snap motion. You know, Get some advantages against the defense. So that's kind of what I've been looking at on the offensive side of the ball. Did want to shout out Underdog Fantasy. That's where I play best ball, daily fantasy, a whole lot more. Make picks on Underdog. It's straightforward. Signing up is even easier. Just head over to Underdog. Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. You can sign up with promo code Duval Daily, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use in your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code Duval Daily to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. 
Must be 18 plus, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, 19 plus in Alabama and New England, and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit ncpgambling.org. Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP. That's 1-800-639-8783 or text NEXT STEP to 53342. New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. Shout out to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring the show. So defensively, Andre Sisco and Antonio Johnson are just not tackling. Andre Sisco has missed 30% of his tackle attempts. Antonio Johnson has missed 286 And for context, like those numbers need to be cut in half for them to be playing effective football um, as pursuit players, as as support players against the run, um, against underneath passes, intermediate passes. They need to be tackling at a much better clip. I think you've seen bad angles. I think you've seen a lack of physicality. I think you've seen just poor form tackling, lack thereof when it comes to form. Those two guys are too good for that. And I know that's got to be driving Ryan Nielsen crazy. They're too good for that. It's unacceptable at this point. The play um, and pursuit and and support, run support from those two guys. Um, I think another thing you can improve, getting Darnell Savage back. Uh you're hopeful that you know this isn't a long-term thing. He's not out multiple weeks. He's got an extra day to get ready for this one. Hopefully, Darnell Savage can get back out there uh, because his versatility to be able to play at the line of scrimmage, um, you know, second level, third level, man coverage against a variety of different guys, come downhill as well. He's very valuable, and he's just more experienced than Jarian Jones. So, as much as I think Jarian Jones is going to be a long-term fixture for the Jaguars. Right now, Darnell Savage is a better option. And then getting Jarian Jones in there in specific moments where you feel really good about what he can do, I think that's the preferred plan. That's plan A for Ryan Nielsen here. So you want to get Darnell Savage back out there soon. Um, you also missed a gimme kick. And so Cam Little can't miss that one. Like If Cam Little misses a 50-plus yard or whatever, no big deal. But he needs to make the ones that are very makeable, and he missed one. And yes, the weather was not good, but that's something you're going to have to deal with in Jacksonville. That's something you're going to have to deal with in the NFL. Bottom line. So you, you got to make that kick. And again, I think he can. I don't think there's any reason to not believe in the talent of a Cam Little. You've also got just costly penalties all over the place. What are they costing? I mean, points. For one, like, I think both times you had a roughing the passer, it helped the Browns score. Were both of them good calls? I mean, I think Antonio Johnson probably deserved what he got. It wasn't a hard hit, but it was a little late. Devin Lloyd, to me, that was a questionable call. Lead with the shoulder, hit him in the torso. It wasn't late. So those are costly penalties. I mean... All the illegal shifts for both teams in the, in the Jaguars versus Browns game was ugly, but like that took points off the board. That took a Christian Kirk touchdown off the board. And what would the narrative be right now if Christian Kirk would have been able to score right there? The Jaguars would have been up 17 to 16. Completely different ballgame. If the Jaguars were one and one right now, Nobody would be calling for Doug Peterson's head. It'd be completely different. Now, that's not what happened. And so you've got to fix these little mistakes. But again, they are very fixable. Um, and then defensively, the final point here, I think you've got to capitalize when there are opportunities, certainly, to force turnovers. They had two opportunities on the first drive last week. You know, uh, second and 20, Deshaun Watson is rolling out to his right. Ronald Darby is in perfect position to pick off a pass. It hits him in the hands. He's not able to catch it. Not only does he not catch it, but it pops up right into Jerry Judy's waiting arms. And he picks up a first down on second and 20. So, like, not only did that go from a potential turnover, giving your offense the ball back, 
it went from not a turnover to a great play for the Browns. So that's very frustrating. And then Devin Lloyd able to pop the football out at the goal line. Great tackle, great forced fumble. Ball doesn't bounce the right way. Um, so there's these little opportunities throughout games where if the Jaguars could capitalize on one of them, it could change the game for the better um, defensively. And Foyer talked about it as well. He thought he should have been able to get a forced fumble in this game. And he just had a little bit of a wrong technique error. Uh, he said he was punching instead of reaching. If he would have reached in one of those, I think it might have been the sack that he got, uh, he may be, may be able to get a forced fumble. So there's different areas where they can just have minor improvements, minor tweaks. And the problem right now is there's so many of these areas but the Jaguars have been in both of these games, and if they can just clean it up a little bit, they'll have a chance. But again, Buffalo is the best team they've played so far. Now, matchup-wise, I think you could point some to some areas where the Jaguars maybe do have some advantages against the Bills, and we talked about that last night on Cover 1 on Disguised Coverage, so again, you should go check that out. But uh, they are the best team the Jaguars have played. Bottom line, Josh Allen is the second best quarterback in the league. There's some weeks where he's certainly the first, and um, it's going to be tough. So we're going to preview that game over the next several days, obviously, but the Jaguars have everything within that building to be able to improve and get better in a week. Can they do it? We're going to find out. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Let me know what you think about these little improvements the Jaguars can make, what improvements you want to see uh, moving forward in the comment section below. And if you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear like the hat I'm wearing right now, become a channel member here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one.